Amen. Amen. I trust you had a good day. You got a little rain this afternoon. I told them the other day, the book of Acts says, the rain is a witness of God. So every time you hear it rain or see it rain, just think God exists. Another existence, another proof that he lives. Amen. Well, let's ask the Lord's blessing. Father, we love you. Thank you for the day. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house yet again on this side of eternity. Lord, truly help us to be sensitive to thy leading and guiding and help us to please you, Lord, in our thoughts and our actions. And Lord, thank you for the dear folks who have come out tonight. I pray that you would bless in a special way. Help us give us understanding of your word and guide us and uh, help us to be pleasing to you in all that we say and do. And I want to yield myself to you the best to know how at this moment. Help you to help me to be filled with the Holy Spirit and say the things, Lord, that needs to be said. And encourage us, Lord. Help us with the Holy Spirit and guidance. And again, Lord, we love you and thank you so much for the truth and the um, that's been able to hold it and, and look into it. And pray you'd guide us now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's sing a song. Let's stand if you don't mind, brother. Uh, Kevin and fill in for us. Y'all pray for the heels. They're out in Texas and everything's big in Texas. So um, let, let, let me tell you a real quick joke. I don't do jokes, but let me tell you a joke real quick about Texas and Tennessee. Y'all heard about them boys? We ain't videoing right now, are we? I done prayed though, ain't I? Man, I'm going to get in the car on. <laughs> Tennessee boys and Tennessee, Texas boys going down the road. Tennessee boys sitting down. They said a rabbit run across the road. Tennessee or Texas boys said, what's that? He said, that's a rabbit. He said, man, in Texas, are five times as big as that. Going down the road, deer runs across the road. What was that? It's a deer. Texas guy said, man, they're five times as big as that in Texas. Turtle walk going across the road. Guy said, what in the world is that? He said, that's a tick. <laughs> <laughs> we better sing. <laughs> <laughs> 391, trust and obey. First, second, and fifth.
see that the choir is going to sing for us. favorites. Uh, just by way of announcement, um, you got a bulletin? Y'all know the announcements. <laughs> Let's take an offer it up. <laughs> Y'all know what's going on. Amen. Let me tell you a joke while the men are coming. <laughs> Y'all blame this on Stan Ramsey over at the funeral home. Y'all know Stan, don't you? Y'all blame this on him. I was in there the other day, and he said, I got one for you, preacher. I said, all right. The little boy wanted a bicycle. He said, I'll go to the Baptist church. Asked him to help me pray about it. He didn't get no bicycle. Went to Pentecostal church. Tell him I need to pray about a bicycle. He said, I didn't get no bicycle. He said, I know what I'll do. I'll go to Catholic church. Went there to Catholic church, saw a little Mother Mary statue standing there. He stole it. Went home with it. He said, if you ever want to see your mother again, you'll give me a bicycle. <laughs> I said, Stan, where'd you get that one at? That's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> so, yeah, you see Stan Ramsey, you tell him you got preacher told his joke at a pulpit. Oh, I got to get back. We're in trouble. Amen. <laughs> Lord, help us. Help us, Lord. We're, we're just flesh. We're just flesh, aren't we? Amen. Thank God for humor, aren't you? I'm glad. I'm glad I can laugh. It's better than crying. Too old to cry about it. Might as well laugh about it. Amen. Father, I do thank you for the day. Lord, I appreciate the humor. I appreciate joy in my heart this morning. Lord, this evening, thank you so much that I have been pardoned. I've been freed from the sin that so captivated me and captured me. Lord, thank you for the freedom that I have. Thank you that I stand today pardoned and know the free pardon of sin. And salvation is uh, very aware to me. And my Savior is before me in heaven. Lord, I'm just... Uh, full of joy this evening. I'm, I want to thank you for it. and Thank you for this offering now. Use it and uh, bless it in a special way. And give us wisdom with it all in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>
has some special singing for us tonight from Miss Kelly and Miss Suzanne. the Word of God truly does change people and we could do all we want to do and I, I want to help people and I want to do all I can for people but until they get in the Word of God it will never be changed that is truly the only thing that truly changes people is the Word of God and uh, I appreciate all the things that help people but it, it really is truly the Word of God Ezra chapter 7 Ezra chapter 7, there is one announcement that I do need to make. This Wednesday at 6.30, if you are a part of our Wednesday night last season Bible study, we won't call it Awana, we're getting away from Awana, and we're discarding that and throwing that mess in the trash. 
Uh, so, uh, but next Wednesday at 6.30, uh, if you'd like to, we'll have a, a meeting and talk about all that. But this, this Wednesday at 6.30, and we'll get you up to speed on it all. But um, just uh, that announcement I did want to make. But Ezra chapter number 7, if you have your Bibles there, let's read a few verses. This is a sort of a part two of this morning. It's sort of continuation. I love the book of Ezra. It's been a while since I've studied and read through Ezra, and I had forgotten just the just the strength I got from Ezra, the 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 just the grit, just the just determination to do something for the Lord. I, Ezra and Nehemiah. I've always read Nehemiah. Uh, when I'm lean in my Christian walk, I get a hold of Nehemiah. And boy, he has just got a heart for the Lord and love to do something for God. And when I read about Nehemiah's life, it just charges me up. Well, I really had forgotten about Ezra in the sense of, and I've got to reading it the last some few days, and I'm really excited about uh, preaching out of Ezra. So in chapter 7, as we sort of continue on uh, out of chapter 6, uh, let's read just a few verses out of chapter 7, verse 11, and I'll give you the thought. The Bible says, excuse me, now this is a copy of the letter that the king or Texas gave unto Ezra the priest, the scribe, even a scribe of the words of the commandments of the Lord and of his statutes to Israel. Or Taxes, king of kings, unto Ezra the priest, a scribe of the law of the God of heaven, perfect peace at such a time. I make a decree that all they of the people of Israel and of his priest Levites in my realm, which are minded of their own free will to go up to Jerusalem to go with thee, for as much as thou art sent of the king and of the seven counselors to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem according to the law of thy God which is in thine heart, and to carry the silver and gold which the king and his counselors have freely offered unto God of Israel, whose habitation is in, in Jerusalem. And all silver and gold that thou canst find in the providence of Babylon, with the freewill offering of the people and of the priest, offering willingly for the house of their God, which is in Jerusalem. And I'll stop there and read in just a few minutes. But I want to go back to verse number 13. And I've underlined this, these th few words for a title, of their own free will. Of their own free will. And I appreciate so much the response this morning. I, I just can't tell you what that did for my heart. I cannot tell you uh, what that did for me spiritually and physically and pastorally. I just cannot tell you uh, what that means to me and the, uh, the expression of this morning, the, uh, the, the, the dedication of all that. But, I, but we know this one thing. It's got to be with your will. It's got to be of your own free will. It's got to be... We have to decide, we have to say in our own heart and mind, you can't buy heart, you can't buy someone's will. Uh, you cannot manipulate and you cannot coerce and uh, you cannot connive and you cannot handcuff, you cannot, oh, you can force people to, to do whatever, but you can't force a heart. You cannot force someone to want to do it. And, and I've said this so many times. And God did that for us in the Garden of Eden. Some ask me, why did God allow Satan into the Garden of Eden? Because if man had not had the free choice to serve him, he'd be nothing more than an animal. If we did not have the free will, if God had not given us the opportunity uh, uh, for a human being to choose God, we'd be just like an animal. An animal it runs on instinct. An animal runs on their created instinct. And we run on a conscience. And so God deliberately gave man and gave us a free will. But we have to exercise that free will. And something stuck out to me out of chapter 7. So this, this great truth that we find that they were so frustrated spiritually because of the things and the wickedness of the going on. But in chapter 7, I find something very interesting about chapter 7. Because the Bible says, of their own free will, go up to Jerusalem, go with thee. And then it says these words in verse 16, offering willingly for the house of their God, which is in Jerusalem. One man said one of the most important words of all the service of God is willingness. Willing to do it. And, and you know, we've said it so many times. If someone is doing something, if their heart's not in it, you might as well go home. If they're not willing, if they're not 
interested, if they don't have a burden for it, and they don't have a heart for it, if they don't have an uh, intention to do right by it, you might as well forget it. You're not going to, uh, the old expression, lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. He's got to have the heart to do it. He's got to have the will to do it. He's got to have the emotions to do it. He's got to have the, the want to. And you can't buy the want to. And tonight, God is just simply telling us that here's a group of people uh, that has went through the difficulties and went through the captivity, but they had a heart for God. They had a willingness to do something for the Lord. That helps me because I want to keep my heart willing. And I get a little ahead of myself, but I want to get some things to you. How do we stay willing? How do I stay in it? How do I stay willing? Because the truth is, uh, we're humans, we're flesh. Uh, there's many days I'm sure you don't want to go to work. Your heart's not in it. I told somebody the other day, I said, when something comes up, I'd say, well, my heart ain't in it today, guys. You know, just heart, my heart ain't in it. My heart ain't in it. And you got you to sort of, and I don't want to say fabricate it, but you got to sort of pump yourself. You got to get up. I got to have motivation. I got to pay the bills. I got to do this. I mean, I got to get this done. I got to get my will back in it. And the Christian life is the same way. You're not always going to live on the mountaintop. You're not always going to be in a place where everything's going to be roses and cartwheels and carousels. You're going to have to say, no, I'm going to get up. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to get my will in it. I'm going to get my heart in it. I'm going to get my heart right, and I'm going to stay in it. I'm going to do it with fervency and with intention and determination. That's just the truth. And he tells us here how we can do that. When I got to searching out this willingly, and, and I don't even have time, I just looked up, and I, I would encourage you to do that some. Just looked up the word willing in the scripture. And that is a great Bible word study. It's to look up willing and how many times God speaks about a heart's, a person's willingness to do something and a heart to do it and a not heart to do it and that lukewarmed and, and, and all the things that it, it pertains to. It's a great Bible study about the willingness of man. Uh, and something fascinates me about the Christian life is the willingness of God and the will of man to be very honest with you I, I don't really fully grasp all that I, I'm really sort of still studying that's a lifelong study of mine is to understand the will of God things are going to happen the sovereignty of God you're not going to change the sovereignty of God you're not going to change things you're not going to God has put things in motion God has established uh, uh, things that you're not going to change I'm not going to change but there's a part of, of creation that he's put in us as we own or have our own free will. I, I don't know where the boundaries some of that is, and I don't know where the borders or some of that is, but I do know this, and I, and I sometimes struggle in my prayer life because I, I don't know if this is the will of God or I'm going to go this way or it's just the will of man. Is it my will, his will? And some of that sometimes gets a little muddy in my mind, but I, I want to have my heart right. I want to have my will toward the Lord. I want to make sure that I've got a willing heart. I believe God can deal with a willing heart. He can't, he can't handle or he can't work through a rebellious heart. But God can work through a willing heart. You know, God can overlook your ability and my ability or the lack thereof if we have willingness to do it. I believe God's interested in somebody not so much with ability but availability. I, I don't know how to do this, Lord. Matter of fact, I, I honestly think God gets more glory from somebody that don't have a clue what they're doing, but they got the heart to do it. They got the willingness to say, Lord, I, I want to just do this, and it's for your honor and glory. I, I may not have all the things figured out. I may not have it all worked out, but I'm going to do this with a clean heart. He tells us in Psalm 51 that David, he required truth on the inward part. God's looking for the willingness. God is looking for the will. God is looking for the right heart toward him. God's not interested in superstars and superheroes and, and some abnormal strength. God's just looking for somebody that will raise their hand and say, I'll go. God's just looking for somebody that will raise the, red, the white flag and say, Lord, I'll just do whatever you want me to do. I surrender my will to you. I believe God gets in on that. And he tells us here in these verses, they had a minded. Notice what it said again. Which are minded of their own free will to go to Jerusalem. Now, it, they could have got disappointed back here in this morning's message. They could have got disappointed. I don't know how many thousands. The Bible doesn't tell us how many thousands were in captivity in Babylon and Assyria. We don't know. But we do know only a small portion of that great number of people that came out of Babylon and Assyria came into Judah and Jerusalem. There was a small portion. 
But I beg to say to you, let, let's just imagine for, for conversation, there's 100,000 that was in Assyria and Babylon, and only 1,000 came out. I would beg to say God is more interested in a thousand that's willing than a hundred thousand that don't have a heart for it. I believe God is more interested in a remnant of people that are just sold out and said, I'm going to do this and I'm willing to do what God wants me to do. Come what may, I'm, I've got the heart to do it and I'm willing to do it than a hundred thousand lukewarm. A hundred thousand that would just do whatever and come a case sarah, sarah. I believe God is interested in that remnant because all through your scripture, he, he, he works through a remnant. Matter of fact, he tells us he uses Israel and he established in Israel because they were a small people that had no strength, that the world looked on and said, why them? God uses the, the small things to confound the wise, and he uses the things that nobody thinks about and nobody wants to use, and the small, minute. But he's looking for that willingness. He look, he's looking for uh, that effort. Effort makes the difference, by the way. One man said, uh, uh, your willingness is a huge indicator of your Christian life. Do you want to do this? Do you want to delight? One man called it delighting in doing the will of God. You know, it's one thing, clean your room. But it's another to delight in cleaning your room. You know, you can kick around and run the back if you want to and throw paper around. It's like, man, I will clean my room. I mean, you can and get it done. But wouldn't it be much better to do, I love vacuuming my floor. You probably won't get no kid to do that. But if, if, you, if, you, could, if you could have the right mindset, and I don't like taking the trash out. Hard to get joy taking the trash out, isn't it? Especially for me. That's one of my besetting sins is taking the trash off. I live somewhere, I just have them come get it once every three or four weeks. <laughs> There's something about the willingness of man, isn't it? There's something about, and, and made all the difference, even yet this morning, it makes all the difference, uh, and, and I could have. I could have, I could have forced people to come, and, and you get up here, and you serve God, and you get out of your, I could have done that, but it would have meant nothing. It would have meant nothing if it would have been by force. It would have been nothing if they would have against someone's will to do it. But oh, oh, how sweet and how wonderful it is when someone says, I want to do this because I want to. I want to do this because I'm willing to do this. And here he tells us they left Babylon. And there was a small group of people, yes, but they were willing of their own free will. I love that expression. I underline it because I didn't ever want to forget it when I read this portion of Scripture again. Of their own free will, they went up to Jerusalem. Verse 14 says, For as much as thou art sent of the king and of the seven counselors to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem according to the law of thy God, which is in thine hand to carry silver and gold, which the king and his counselors have freely offered. We don't require people to give. I don't force people. I don't call people. I don't solicit people. I, I would never, I, I, when I first, we first started this church, I was encouraged by a preacher to call other preachers and ask for help on starting this church. I thought that was probably okay. I wasn't against it at the time. But I remember calling, I had a whole list, had like three pages of pastors that might, would, might be interested in helping someone start a church financially. And I thought, well, that's what I'll do. I'll go and ask around, and I'll talk to people, and I'll see if I can see if they'll, you know, help us pay the light bill, whatever. So I was sort of soliciting, I guess. And I called, and I called one, and didn't get an answered. Called two or three, whatever. And I finally got a hold of a guy, preacher, and he's a nice guy. And I, 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 I just went through a conversation. I don't know all the details, but when I hung up the phone, I was determined at that moment: if God ain't in it, I ain't in it. I'll never call another human being. I'll never, ever ask anybody else for a dime. I said, if God's in it, he provide for it. And from that day to this, I have never once ever solicited anybody. I have never once said, you must give to do this, or you must do this. I'm... You can't legislate the heart. 
You can't legislate somebody's will. You can't force somebody into doing something. You can't manipulate and squeeze. Oh, uh, you might get a little effort from it, but you're not going to get anything from their heart. One of the words that I read in verse number 19, notice what he says. He says restoration. And the vessels that are given, I get ahead of myself here, for the service of the house of God, those deliver thou before the God of Israel. The effort makes the difference. If you'll notice that they restored the worship. They restored the house of God. They began to uh, uh, thrive. You know why? It all, it all resolved around people that wanted to do it. They had the willingness to do it. They hard, had the heart to do it. Matter of fact, I want you to write down. I'll just go through it. He may have it on the screen for you. Exodus chapter 35. Listen to these words. He, God records for us something that's pretty profound. In Exodus chapter 35, verse number 5. Listen to these words. He says, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whatsoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it and offer it of the Lord. Gold, silver, and brass. He said, If you've got a willing heart to give, and you've got a willing heart to participate, then give. He goes on to tell us in verse 21, verse 22, listen to the words of the scripture. He says, And they came, everyone's whose heart stirred him up. That makes the difference. Someone wants to give, someone wants to give of their life, someone wants to give of their time. He said the Bible says they were stirred up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing, they brought an all Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation for all the service of the holy garments. What was the difference? The difference was they had a heart to do it. The difference was they, they were willing. They said, yes, I want to be involved in this. Yes, I'm willingly going to do this. He tells us in 2 Corinthians, it's sort of the same idea. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, listen to the words of Scripture in verse number 12. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that man hath, and not according to he hath not. For I mean not that other men be eased, and ye be burdened, but by quality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, and their abundance also may be a supply for your want. And there is now maybe equality. As it is written, he hath gathered, much hath nothing over. And he that hath gathered little had no lack. God said a willing mind makes the difference. Chapter 9 tells us, verse number 7, verse number 8. He says, every man according to his purposed in his heart so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity but God loveth a chill forgiver I appreciate all that goes on around this building I appreciate those as far as I know I've not come into here and saw anybody mad because they vacuumed the floor I might ask them to to, to you know, get your replacement if they're kicking stuff over I gotta clean the building gotta pass it I mean, come on let's Let's get somebody else. God is looking for willingness. God is looking for a free will. So then I ask myself the question, check my own heart in this. How do I keep my will in it? You know what that's a battle for? A battle for the wills. Satan's so trying to get your heart. Because if he can get your heart, he can get your hands. You know what happens to people? They get their heart out of it. It won't be long their hands are out of it. It won't be long their feet's out of it. And you can't find them a mile away. So how do you keep your heart in it? He gives them to us. Notice what he says. Verse 17. That thou mayest buy speedily with the money, bullocks, and rams, and lambs, with their meat offerings and the drink offering, and offer upon them the altar of the house of your God, which is in Jerusalem. And whatsoever shall seem good to thee and to thy brethren, notice these words, to do with the rest of the silver and the gold, and to do after the will of your God, verse 19, and the vessels that are given for thee for the service of the house of God, those deliver thou before the house for the God of Jerusalem. And whatsoever, shall, whatsoever more shall be needed for the house of thy God, which thou shalt have occasion to bestow, bestow it unto the king's treasure house. 
As I read those verses, it began to dawn on me. How do you keep your heart in it? How do you keep your will? And he tells us verse 17 to buy, verse 18 to do, verse 19 are given, verse 20 is to bestow, verse 21 do it speedily. It all indicates what you're involved in. Stay involved. You stay involved, you stay invested. You know as well as I do, if you don't get invested, if you don't get involved, it won't be long, your heart will be out of it. It's super simple, but it's one of the most difficult things to do is to keep our heart right. Most days, at least most weeks of my life, I'll quote Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Because my flesh is continually saying, stop. My flesh is continually saying, it's not worth it. My flesh is continually saying, it's too hard. My flesh is continually saying, it's not worth this, it's not worth that, it's not worth the struggle, it's not worth the fight, it's not worth it. My flesh is continually saying that. So I have to get in the Word of God, and I have to get near the Lord, the Lord, and I have to say, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. These 17, 18, 19, and 20 is an indicator of where your heart is. It's not about money. As I said, I'm never going to ask, I'm never going to badger, I'm never going to speak to people about giving. But the truth is, whatever you give your money to is what you love. He says where your heart is, that's where your treasure be. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So the willingness, the indicator of your heart is what are you doing? The indicator of your willingness is, where's your energy going? Being truthful, but there's times I don't want to come to church. My heart ain't in it. Sometimes you've got to force yourself to do right. Sometimes you just got to say, no, we're doing it because that's what's right. Something else gets me about this. I find something in verse 26 that really causes me to keep my heart right i hadn't thought about it this way but look with me in verse number 26 i guess one of the biggest things that causes me to want to keep my heart right with god i find it in verse 26 and this just might be the fabric of this message notice it says verse 26 and whatsoever will not do, whosoever will not do the law of thy God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily upon him, whether it be unto death or to banishment or to confiscation of goods or imprisonment. Do you know one of the things that I want to try to keep my heart right with the Lord, and I wrote this down, is because of consequences. You know what we're missing in America? You know what we're missing in most lives today is consequences. You know one of the things that causes me in my Christian life, and, and, and I'm not serving God to get, but it's better on this side than it is on the devil's side. But one of the things that causes me and helps me to try to keep my heart right is consequences. Because I know this to be true. You don't live unto yourself and you don't die unto yourself. You get your heart cold and indifferent toward the things of God. And you start leaning toward the world. And you start walking away from God and your heart gets out of it. And you start leaning and get your heart away from it. And you lean and you lean. And before you know it, you're out of church. You're out of the work of God. You're out of reading your Bible. You're out of going to church. You're out of uh, praying. You're out of giving. You're out of uh, supporting the work of God. And before long... Before long, others are following you. And the consequences is what causes me to try to keep my heart right. When I read that, God just solidified in my heart, you better keep your heart right. Because when your, your will is out of it, your heart is out of it, you've gotten cold and indifferent, I remember, I remember, I've told this story, but I remember when I got saved and got called to preach, I was going to go off to school. I was going to go off to Bible college. I was so excited. 
And Victor had us a little going away thing that night. And I, I, I got up and testified. So I'm going to Bible college. I'm going to go study the Bible for four years. And I'm going to get in the ministry. And I, I had this big plan. And I still have that big plan. But I, I remember they had a little thing for us. And Phil Jones walked up to me and put his arm around my shoulder just like that. And he said to me, the best place to get away from God is Bible college. And I laughed in my heart. I thought, crazy. I'm going to study the Bible for four years. What are you talking about, man? And about two or three, four, five, six months, maybe a year, it was just rigid. It was just mechanical. Checking the box. Read four chapters. Do this, do that, do that. And I did not realize I had got cold and indifferent, sitting right in the middle of Bible school, <laughs> sitting right in the middle of a college class, sitting right in the middle of hermeneutics. That's, her that's interpretation of the Bible. It's a big old word. Homiletics and hermeneutics. Homiletics is the speaking of it, and hermeneutics is the interpretation of Scripture. But I remember sitting in there and doing all the things spiritually. And I remember uh, checking the boxes. And I read seven chapters like I was supposed to. And I said my prayers for that day. And I've been out witnessing like I was supposed to. And I've been to class like I was supposed to. And I did everything I was supposed to do. But inside, cold and indifferent, sitting right in the middle of a church pew. But my heart had got out of it. I remember the pastor got up and preached a message about doing the will of God without the heart. And I'm telling you, like a freight train, God just hit me. And I realized right then how critical it is to keep your heart in it. And the willingness that you must have to stay right with God. And so if I could encourage you in any way tonight from the Scripture... Of their own free will. He tells us in Corinthians that don't use the liberty for a stumbling block. We have full free reign of our spiritual life. But if we're not careful, if we let our cold heart continue, then we'll get out of the things of God and our will will be difficult and our will will be cold and stagnant and we've lost the drive from behind it. Of their own free will, they went to Jerusalem. Of their own free will, verse 16 says, they offered willingly. Verse 17, they bought, they did, they gave, they bestowed, they did it speedily, and they realized of the consequences. They realized... If I don't keep this thing right, I'll be in the ditch. If we don't keep our heart right, if we don't keep a check on it, we'll be in trouble. Of their own free will. Let's pray together.